Welcome to Predator Paradise. Except for one thing. This banquet is crowded. There's always another hungry mouth to feed. One for every drop of blood spilled. The competition is fierce. It's about to get ferocious. This land will confront a staggering transformation. In Savuti, once the body drops, the real battle begins. There is a place in Africa that punishes the living. Temperatures here can hit over 40 degrees. There's virtually no rain for most of the year. Savuti is almost 5,000 square kilometers of sheer desolation. Here, at the heart of southern Africa, is Botswana. The Linyanti River supports a lush animal reserve, with water enough to flow south, straight towards Savuti, or at least it used to. 25 years ago, the water table mysteriously sank, and the Savuti Channel stopped flowing. All that's left of it today is a riverbed, now dry, that stretches a hundred kilometers. There are four scant water holes along it, strung far apart. These are no oases. They're shallow troughs amid the vast wilderness. They offer just enough to attract life not sustain it. September is the peak of the dry season. First summons animals, then consumes them. But then that's not their gravest threat. The waterhole is a trap. Where prey gathers, so do predators. The pickings are plentiful. The supply constant. here almost never go hungry. This is their paradise. They've only got one small problem. Each other. If there's plenty to be had, there are also plenty of other appetites. Savuti is a battleground for predators. Anywhere else, the hard part would be catching prey. Here, the challenge is keeping it. These animals have become experts at outcompeting the competition. Each species has had to adapt a different strategy to survive. These are the masters of cooperation. Wild dogs will band together 
running up to three kilometers to wear their prey down. But then the impala at Savuti can't stray so far from their water. So the chase is over before it began. These predators are fast at eating. They have to hurry. It won't be long before other predators will arrive in this crowded arena. So part of their strategy is to share. They don't bicker over a kill. Today's intruder the ultimate opportunist. Hyenas have the perfect approach for this competitive world. Muscle in, head on. Why should they go to the trouble of hunting when intimidation will do the trick? If that fails, they'll outnumber the opposition. But then the party's already over, once the jackal turns up. His strategy, given the glut of predators? An elaborate game plan to turn them against each other. It starts with a shout out, heard by the top of the food chain. These lions are spoiled. They'll hunt when they have to. Here in Savuti, they can kick back and live large, because scavenged kills come so easily, so often. The jackal waits for his opening. As for the hyenas, it can take four to take on one lioness. So they call for backup. The hyena clan may stand a chance. Stand a chance. The Savuti cats are so well fed, this meal might hardly be worth their lifting a paw. The clan is gathering, a few hyenas short. But they come with fresh appetites. And hunger fuels aggression. The jackal makes his play. His strategy pays off. One kill, claimed and relinquished by four different factions. Won and lost by four different strategies. The balance of power is revealed in the exchange of a carcass. Savuti's predators coexist through competition. The result? 
predators flourish. It's not always their own bellies the hunters are looking to fill. This wild dog pack includes 17 animals. Every dog, another hungry mouth to feed. The smell of blood on the fur of the hunter's neck is intoxicating. And the yelps that smell elicits cue a ready response from them to regurgitate their meal. The urge is so intense that a single clump of meat may pass from one dog to another through up to five stomachs. In fact, a hunting party receives a greeting that's so loud it calls for vigilance. Other predators may hear and come calling. So eager welcomers must be gagged to keep quiet. Today is a monumental event. New pups are emerging from the den. They're all of three weeks old, not yet weaned, but curious about the temptation of meat. Wild dogs are nomadic, except when caring for pups. They can't leave the den for at least a couple of months. This year, that's going to mean trouble for the dogs. An ill wind is blowing their way. Savuti is about to be transformed. While the dry season rages on here, parts north face another extreme. In Angola, these highlands get plenty of rain. But they haven't shared their floodwaters with Savuti in the south, in the south, for 25 years. Something strange is happening this season. It's actually no surprise why the water is spreading now, after a quarter century. The water table underground has been steadily rising over time. The rainfall in the north operates like clockwork, surging and ebbing in 40-year cycles. Three out of four waterholes are engulfed within three months. The Savuti Channel is reborn. It's a heady time for graces. They've rarely endured a dry season without thirst. Now, none need want for drink. They've had to hover close to the waterholes for generations. Suddenly, they're free to wander. The herds can spread far and wide. For them, Savuti once meant hardship. Now, it promises paradise. But not for everyone. Savuti's predators are at a loss. Whenever they've wanted food, they've never had to look any further than the waterhole. Now, their meals are a moving target. Before they can fight for food, first they must find it. Even if they do cross paths with their prey, to catch it, 
they'll need to cope with a new challenge. Getting wet. Most grazers are built for flight, not fight. Kudu are long-legged, giving power to their stride. A big plus now. The channel may be new, but it's already three meters deep in spots. A dog is small. A kudu is smart. Smart enough to figure out that deep water is its ticket to eluding the pack. When the dogs were on dry ground, they had a surefire strategy for clinching a kill. By teaming up to cut off a kudu's escape route. anymore. The rising channel has given prey the advantage. The dogs could starve. They should leave and try finding prey that's not so adept at evading them, eating them. But they can't. Their pups are just six weeks and won't be old enough to stray far from the den for another month. Nine more hungry mouths to feed. And at their tender age, they can't go more than a few days without meat. need prey, to eat, but also to learn to hunt themselves. They hone those skills as they play. How to give chase. How to attack. How to cooperate. But there's no replacing the real thing. Soon enough, they'll have to be trained on the job. The hyena clans got to stay with their young too. Except they nurse their cubs even longer, for a year or more. To generate that much milk, an adult hyena has a special adaptation. Her jaws and stomach are strong enough to digest bone, rich with calcium. But suddenly, bones are in short supply. The channel has scattered her prey far afield. The clan have to follow their food, even if that takes them far from their young. Hyenas usually scavenge in the dead of night. Opportunities are few and far between. Tonight, one is in the air. Every meter the scent draws them on, takes them deeper into another clan's territory. But they're not about to turn back. This is a windfall. There's no telling how the elephant died Perhaps simply from old age. But its meat is just as welcome. The hyenas are oddly quiet. They're tense. This is not their territory. Hunger has driven them to risk a raid. Their reward is a banquet. 
Still, if they're discovered by the clan that controls this turf, it will be war. Calls in the night threaten just that. The choice is starve. Starve or feast and fight. But these stragglers are sure to be outnumbered against a rival clan, so their chances are slim to none. The decision, even this temptation, isn't worth the risk. Live to raid another day. For the predators here, it's a time of reckoning. Savuti's lions are in for a rude awakening. There are seven sub-adults in this pride. They've, they've always had every advantage. Not anymore. There comes a point in every lion's life when he has to step up to adulthood. It's time to get their feet wet. Some are readier than others. They have to learn how to hunt. How will they pull that off? when there's no prey to be found. Life lessons come by way of their mother. But she herself is learning the lay of this new, altered land. Wafting across the water is the scent of Lechwe. The shift in the wind wafts the scent of lion just as well. Stalking is a fine art, an acquired skill. One the cubs are ill-equipped at. Hunting lessons are good for the long haul, but you can't eat them. The hunter's loss is as well the scavenger's. The jackal is too small to cross the channel. His world has suddenly collapsed to one bank. That world gets even smaller as the waters continue to swell. Finally, the channel threatens, so his mate moves their den, pups and all. A jackal pair may raise up to four pups for up to eight months. Parents are monogamous, fiercely devoted to sharing the burdens of rearing. Even now, when food has grown scarce. Savuti's predators no longer accommodate each other's appetites. They are suddenly all the more wary. The jackal's usual trick is to sow confusion so he can sweep in to snatch a scrap. His call for other predators can be heard for eight kilometers around. But these days, with animals so scattered, his yelps fall on deaf ears. Desperate times, desperate measures. The response Intimidation, 
hyena style. Thieves are unwelcome when hunters have to work harder for their meal. Their meal. What's a jackal to do? The last resort. Fend for himself. The jackals of Savuti must stoop to hunting. For morsels at that. An occasional rodent will hardly be enough to feed his litter. The wild dogs, meanwhile, are growing more accustomed to the channel. They've cornered in parlor across the way, along a shallower stretch. But something tells them to approach this crossing with caution. Something foreign. Savuti has a new threat. Most of the dogs have never seen anything like a crocodile. But then there are the veterans. <laughs> Some may have ventured great distances in their day, so they might have experienced crocodiles elsewhere. Now, they've all seen what they need to know. The whole pack is on edge. Except for one. The alpha male is that hungry. He's also that lucky. The crocs are full from feasting on Impala. Water. Now from land, the Impala are under siege. For the other dogs, it's too much to bear. Hunger for Impala trumps fear of crocs. But the crocs aren't after them. The dogs are less appetizing when there are Impala to be had. A dog is a tougher target, and less filling at that. The pecking order still ensures all will eat, even now, in these desperate times. It's the law of the pack. Though the last to arrive gets the least. There's not enough to go around. But what about this latecomer? The appearance of a hyena might have sent the dog scurrying just a month ago. Now, they send the hyena scurrying. This meal is too hard won. The floodwaters have changed the rules. Up and down the channel, the herds are now on the move. Grazers retrace ancient migration routes long forgotten. Great herds of Cape Buffalo sweep through here every year.
The herd rarely tarries. But this time, the new channel is an invitation. It's a welcoming extended to the wild dogs as well. Their pups are four months, old enough at last to travel. The pack is finally free to extend its range. They'll follow the Impala. And following them... Crocs. The whole unlikely caravan heads downriver. Sabuti has become a movable feast. Animals who are strangers to one another are now crossing paths. Three days, 45 kilometers away from the wild dog's home. The trouble with traveling is you never know when you're trespassing. A rival pack of wild dogs may range across a territory upwards of 600 square kilometers. It'll be hard for the home team to avoid crossing someone. What they don't expect is who that someone is. Baboons are wired for mischief. If one gets near, another will try to get nearer. Before you know it, you're surrounded. They taunt. They test. But it's not hard to tell where the fun ends and a real fight begins. <coughs> the dominant baboon could kill a dog if he wanted to. Today, his bark is worse than his bite. The pack hang tough. That is, until someone tougher arrives. To pitch a fit. So much for squatting. If the penthouse is taken, so is the ground floor. The biggest bully always gets the last word. The lion's search is guided by the water's edge. The sub-adults are still hunters in training and still hungry. Here comes lunch. Then again, buffalo are not easy prey. They're among the most aggressive and feared animals in Africa. A bull can weigh 700 kilograms, heavy enough to crush a lion like a tank.
Mother is a powerhouse. Her studied eye scans for the weak among the herd. The others fall in. The trap is set. Then, a surprise attack. It doesn't take much for the wild dogs to whip the buffalo into a stampede. Unwittingly, straight into the lion's ambush. did not flush out the victim. Instead, they have four dejected dogs to thank. The cubs can't rely on their mother much longer, nor on the steady supply of prey they counted on before the channel flooded. Not anymore. And they're not alone. By December, the animals have had three months of hard lessons. Life is changing in ways subtle and profound. Any and all have no choice but to take to the water. But even as Sabuti's predators are transformed, a constant remains. Hunger is their stubborn companion. Sometimes it's their only one. If prey is scattered, so is the rest of this hyena's clan. This close should be easy pickings. But water turns a high-speed chase into a slow-motion slog. The hyena's got one thing going for her. Endurance. A strategy to wear her victim down. It's working. is not a spectator sport. But this time, the hunters do not chase each other off. Incredibly, the hyena and the dogs are both taking part in the kill together. The two competitors are cooperating. It's staggering behavior, never before glimpsed, let alone documented.
Hunger has overcome rivalry. Hyena and wild dog are so hungry, they're setting differences aside to both partake. At the turn of a channel's course, Savuti is undoing ages of evolutionary expectations. But already, word that there's food to be had is spreading to others. The vision of vultures broadcasts a summons for kilometers around to feast. The hyena's backup is sure to respond to the signal. The wild dog's pack instinct kicks in. They better hurry and summon the other dogs before this meal is gone. For a stolen moment, the hyena has the kill all to herself. But not for long. Here comes her worst nightmare. The hyena's clanmate joins her. They're used to guarding their kills from other predators. They're not used to this. The risk? Being trampled. The buffalo doesn't eat meat. Instead, the herd is coming to the rescue of an injured fellow herbivore. After all, they've got a newfound claim to this domain. The balance of power keeps shifting in Savuti. The buffalo are preeminent. The wild dogs return. Just in time. The truth is sinking in for the buffalo. They're too late to save this victim. The hyenas sweep back in to reclaim their prize. But the dogs have the same idea. Head to head, two wild dogs are no match for the hyenas' raw aggression. <laughs> The pack has been summoned. It's like the old days. Predators piling on to compete for one meal. Finally, numbers win against brute strength. The pack prevails. The hyena who first feasted is sated, but her clanmate won't back down. Not until she too gets her due. Happy hunters all. The warriors of Savuti will live to fight another battle. They've survived the worst the channel has dealt them. But the rules are changing again. The rainy season is here. January has always brought passing storms to Savuti. That's how the old water holes got replenished. But this season, the rains are simply a clincher. <laughs>